Hello, I'm Scott Brown. Welcome to Green Wind and Other Home Energies. Okay, we've got nine coils all sitting here perfectly. I look at just inside, I see my red line, top and bottom, top and bottom there, top and bottom there, top and bottom there, all the way around. And they all fit wonderfully. The other thing is, I was worried about how close these would be at the bottom. I actually have a gap, like right there, in between a few of the spacings here. Notice that the magnet sits in the middle here, here, and here. And looking at them, they all sit out very nicely. What is left to do is to take these wires and undo them, and wire them all up, and then across here, between each of the coils, because we want to be able to pick this up and drop it back down. I'm going to draw another form on a piece of wood and get ready to cast. But in the meantime, I need to wire up all of these. <laughs> kind of looks like eyeballs. Anyway, so we'll get back at you in just a minute. Oh, just for the giggles of it, we found uh, three of these little craters in two days. That's kind of rare. Usually I'm seeing about one every six months. Look how fast they can travel. He's sliding real good inside here. Parmesan cheese. Ooh, look at them go. Look at them go. <whistles> My goodness. Found three of them. My wife stomped one of them. <laughs> Flushed the other one. So I only got one to, for my collection this time. Alright, next we have uh, some fiberglass sheeting. That's eight square feet. I don't know if I got the focus in on that. Eight square feet. And nothing but a cloth. Eight square feet is just a little bit under three by three, or three by three would be nine square feet. Anyway, we're fixing to cut this out and cut some strips, and we'll stick them on these. Alrighty, I've finished drawing the 14 inch circle on the outside, and using the same template. See, this thing came in handy with all these dots all colored for what I needed. One nail in the center, and this will pop off. This is where we plan how to wire up our coils. I'm going to set these coils up and show you how they all fit. This is on a piece of straight, flat press board. It must be completely flat. It can't be warped. You've got to have it right. Or it won't be flat between the magnet rotors. And it'll scrape on one spot and have a gap on the other side or so. It's kind of hard to keep it straight. So Anyway, a flat piece of board is is a must and for the lid as well this is the top of a desk that uh, we decided to move out I figure I'd utilize the wood Okay, well I measured out to seven and a half inches because I really don't think 14 is enough to actually play with and put my terminals in there. Hey, get out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and draw one more circle here. As soon as I find one of these holes that line up with that dot, mm, that one looks like it right there. This will give me a 15 inch circle in order to uh, go ahead and fasten the three pieces of all thread that hold the stator in between the magnet rotors. There we go. And also put terminals on. That gives me all the room for wiring and everything. So now we have a 15 inch circle and I'm going to lay the coils out here and get to wiring things up. Hello I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. What here you see is my table saw. I got a screw in the center of this one disc that I cut out before. I figured I'd show you how in case y'all haven't seen Dan Rojas do it. Right here, I need this to be five and a quarter inches to go inside my mold as I cast my stator. I measured half of that and drilled a hole in the top of my table saw. Doesn't hurt it. What I want to do is lower the blade down until it's flush with the table. Keep your 
have a loop. Now you don't hear it anymore. Raise the blade up a little more. Let it come to a full, complete stop, and you notice this is a perfect, perfect disc. Other than a little bit of this here, I don't really care about that. I'm going to lower my blade first, I always do, that way I don't make a mistake. Hit the switch by accident and cut something when I'm not trying to use the saw. And unplug it when you're done. This is one dangerous piece of equipment. There we are. Now I have the centerpiece for my mold. There we go. See, I stripped that out. I can push that screw right through, but it's just in there just enough where it's not going to wobble enough. And there is a perfect disc. Well, you saw me cut this out. Uh, looked like I started on the wrong size but just before I started the camera. When I put it in, I put it in the right hole. So that works good. This sets right down the middle. It's going to be wonderful need to have this in here it helps put all your coils dead center you want to line them straight up to this point here there we go this one I moved this one I moved there we go that means the bag magnets are going to pass these holes perfectly I like to have it balanced it makes a nice nice sine wave anyway well this comes out and we need this in here so we can figure exactly how we're going to wire this thing and about an eighth inch in is where the LUTs are going to be. So this has got actually a little bit more than an eighth inch, closer to a quarter inch. The lug nut, uh, the the all thread where the lugs are on the on the brake disc. Okay, got bugs flying in my face. Well, I'm going to put some frog tape around the outside here. You see, this is all kind of chipped up. Basically, what this does, it coats the outside and overlaps just a little bit. Boy, that bug's frying. Wish a bunch more would. Anyway. Uh, then we'll set this down in here and it also seals Okay, well, I've got it wrapped all the way around evenly on both sides and I pushed it down as hard as I can Trying to get rid of as much of the wrinkle as possible cool thing about the frog tape. It doesn't stick that well It doesn't stick that well, but what it does is if Moisture gets up under here the glue expands and also gets hard right now So basically I won't have a bunch of resin up in here And that's going to help it to release later if it doesn't come loose from here. I'm also going to wax all of this and stick her in. Okay, what you can see I've done across two, every two coils, I've run this fiberglass tape. This fiberglass tape is for doing drywall. So you can see through it real nicely. It's self-adhesive, but just barely. I mean, it doesn't stick much, see? But it'll stick enough to hold itself in place. 
until I put a few drops of uh, super glue on it and saturate this area and this area and this area and this will bind all of this together so when I when I'm done I can wire all of this up and then I can lift it all out set it to the side I can start assembling my mold waxing and greasing or whichever you want to do to have a releasing agent then after I've painted uh, over the the grease or the wax with some fiberglass resin which I mix 50-50 with baby powder and and that's for strength and it'll still be clear then you put the fiberglass mat down which I have right here cut that out and set that down and then you pat all that out and get all the bubbles and air and everything out of it and just a little bit more fiberglass resin then you set all these coils in along with the connections here here and here this is going to be my uh, this is going to be my starts and I'm going to put my finishes over here notice this is green red and blue so I didn't have a black that was actually working so that'll be like first phase second phase and third phase and I got these close together where I can run a piece of wire across them and short these together all your starts will be together because this is going to be wired in star if I decide to wire this in delta later, all I got to do is take that jumper off and I can I have all ends of all three of my phases. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to space them a little bit farther. And this is going to be uh, uh, phase one, phase two, and phase three right here. So I have three phase output in star. And then I can wire off. I'll explain uh, star and delta wiring a little later on. Basically, to uh, start off, Delta is a lower voltage, about half voltage, and more amps. And then star is twice the voltage and half the amps. But that doesn't ring true all the way. Once, uh, once the wind starts picking up and gets up to a higher, uh, a higher level, the current will flow more in, in uh, delta. Uh, basically, you multiply your, uh, multiply your voltage times your current and you come up with a certain amount of power you'll find out that in the higher winds you're going to get more power out of delta but ninety percent of your wind and your power is basically kind of uh, going to come out in the low winds for low rpm and that's going to be in star that's why we wire this in star we'll show you a diagram of that later uh... basically i'm going to wire all this up and then i'll show you the connections when i'm done because it's going to take a while and i don't want to bore you completely on the camera I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies.